Hi, my name's Kelly. I'm a CBT therapist and psychologist. And today I want to talk to you about what you can do if you are overthinking. So this could be about worrying about just general things. It could be really preoccupied potentially with your, with your body. There's something in CBT we call postponing our thoughts or our worries. And how you do this is there's quite a few steps, but I promise you that if you're able to employ all of these steps, it's going to be really, really helpful to help you to manage your overthinking and also potentially to help if you are a professional to help with your clients. So as I said, it's called either postponing your thinking or postponing your worries. So first of all, what you have to do is actually recognise when you are worrying or overthinking about something. Now this can be actually quite tricky because sometimes if we've been thinking about a certain thing for quite a long time, it can become quite ingrained within us. So we don't sometimes actually realise we're overthinking until we've kind of spiralled into that hole, so to speak. So the, as I said, the first step is to recognise when you are overthinking. And then once you start to do that, you want to make a log of what it is that you are overthinking or what you're worrying about. And I just suggest just to write the headlines so not to delve too much into that thought, but just to capture the headlines of what it is that you are overthinking about. Make a log of that now. And apparently there are some apps that can actually do this for you, which obviously is, it is great if you have your phone on you, but you can just write it in your notes on your phone or just do it with a pen and paper. And so once you've written down the headline, you want to create a statement that you're going to say to yourself. So you want a, a fixed statement. So this isn't a statement to push your thoughts away, because we know as soon as we try and block our thoughts, they're going to come back stronger. So it's about recognising that thought is there. So a statement that it could be, not right now, I'll think about you later, or... I'm going to park you for now, I'll come back to you. So you're accepting of the thought, you've recognised it, but you've also made it clear that you're not going to delve into that thought at that moment. And it's really important to have that particular phrase because you are conditioning your mind. So before your mind would have had these thoughts, run with it for sometimes minutes, hours even, and you, as I said, you get kind of stuck in that spiral or that rabbit hole. So you're conditioning your mind. So you're starting to say that phrase of, not right now, I'll think about you later. And then the thought is gonna pop back up and you should do it again. Not right now, I'll think about you later. And sometimes it's really helpful on your log of your thoughts, to almost create a tally of how many times that thought comes up for you. So you've now got the headline of your thought written down. You've got your phrase that you're saying to park that thought. And then you carry on with your day. I suggest really kind of in investing in whatever you're doing, whether you're at work, whether you're doing housework, whether you're with other people, really try and shift all of your attention back onto that task at hand. And then once you've done that, if the thought pops up again, just do the same process. So you do this throughout the day and then normally at the end of the day, you're going to have your thinking time or your worry time, however you want to phrase it. So you want this time to be as set as you can be each day. So whether it's 4 p.m. each day or 6 p.m., you don't want it to do, do it too close to your bedtime. So you have this set time and a set place if you can. And again, this is about conditioning yourself. So you're training your brain. Remember, your brain's a muscle, so you can work it out. So you've got your, now you've got your list, you've got your, your time of when you're going to think about your thoughts. And then you want to set an actual time limit for it. So between 15 and, and 30 minutes max. And so then you get to your, your thinking time and you, and you sit down in, in your space and you've got that list of all the things that have cropped up for you during that day. So then what I want you to do is to go through that list and you're only allowed to think about the things that are still bothering you. So just cross off the ones that Mm, don't really care about anymore or they're not really bothering me just knock them off your list and then what you want to do is divide the amount of thoughts or worries that you have with the amount of time that you have so if, say if you have 10 left and you've got 20 minutes you're gonna set a timer for two minutes 
and you're going to work through each thought for the allocated time. This is again which is really important because we are making the, the thinking more manageable rather than it overwhelming us and taking up a lot of our time. We are now making it really quite clear and quite structured. So you're th sitting down, you've got this list and you've got the, the time. And now when you go through the worries that remember only the ones that are still bothering you, you go through them and you look at the, the thought and think, OK, is this something that I can problem solve? Is this something that I need to create an action plan for? Is there something that I can do about this? So imagine if it's something that you're worried about what you're going to eat for the rest of the week. It could be about planning meal prep. It could be about planning menus. So you're making it quite active. So that is this something that you can, a problem or a thought that you can solve. You do, you do that sort of method. If it's something that's more of a negative thought or something that isn't really serving you, isn't really helpful, you challenge it. So think, look at this thought and think, what would I say to someone that I really care about instead of saying this thought to them? Or you could ask yourself, is there another way of looking at this? Is there, is there a way that I can balance this out? Or kind of thinking about, is, is there an alternative? What would be a kinder way or what would be an alternative thought to have to try and challenge that? Or even thinking about, okay, what is the evidence of this thought being true? And also, what is the evidence of this thought not being true? So you're using those cognitive restructuring. I've got some other videos on here about cognitive restructuring, if you'd like to look at that in more detail. But that's basically what you're doing. And if it's a thought that you can really neither solve or, or challenge, that's when the kind of the, the mindfulness um, skills come in. So that's about letting that thought go. So recognising it's something there, but just letting it go. So it may be that you, you meditate on it for a little bit, or it could just be that you're just like, you know what, like that, that thought, there's nothing really that I can, I can do with it. I just need to let it go. Again, that can take practice. And that, that happens less often because you normally it will fall into the, the problem solve or the challenging if you hadn't already let, let it go earlier in the, on in the process. So then you come to the end of your thinking time. And remember to keep really structured with the time limit that you gave yourself and then simply just move away from that space. And that's why that space is important. So you can physically move out of it and then you carry on with the day. Do something that you enjoy, whether that is maybe watching an episode of a show that you really like, whether that is making yourself a nice drink, whether it is going out for a walk or calling, calling someone, stroking an animal, whatever it may be but just making sure that you distract yourself from kind of the, the the thinking time that you had so that is a way to help you to manage your overthinking or worrying and um, there are loads of other videos on my youtube about all the different techniques and skills that you can employ on yourself but also if you wanted to use them with clients as well so i hope you found that helpful and um, thank you